Well, it's time for yet another isometric turn-based RPG, so this time we'll enter the world of Shadowrun. Now if you don't know what Shadowrun is, it is a fairly standard cyberpunk setting, but it has also seen the reawakening of magic. So technology and sorcery coexist and the world is both populated with humans and metahumans, i.e. orcs, elves, dwarves and so on. So of course you get to choose between all those races and you get to build your character in various ways including arcane magic, computer hacking, shamanism, remote drones firearms, magically enhanced melee combat and so on. Now if you have seen my review of it you know that I actually quite like Shadowrun Hong Kong's predecessor Shadowrun Dragonfall. It improved on the first title of the series in many ways and in turn created a much more fleshed out game with all the hallmarks of a good RPG. It had good character building, many ways to complete your missions depending on your attributes, fantastic companions and a nicely written story with actual impact on the world. So let's see how the new one holds up. Shadowrun Hong Kong takes the series into a new city and I'll let you take a good guess which that one's gonna be. Gameplay wise it is very similar to the previous games, in fact so similar that one could argue they didn't add anything new at all. You still play a glorified mercenary operating from a shitty neighborhood who accepts missions from shady individuals in which he shoots, hacks and I'm sorry, decks and talks his way to victory. The turn based combat also still consists of mostly taking cover and choosing the highest hit percentages with every class having some kind of gimmick to help out. What needs to be mentioned here, and I probably should have emphasized this in my Dragonfall review already, is that mechanically the Shadowrun series has always been very streamlined. Which makes this a good beginner's RPG, but you're definitely wrong if you're looking for the next Divinity Original Sin. There is for example a ton of skill trees, but the leveling up process is very straightforward, with level 1 of a skill tree taking 1 skill point, level 2 taking 2 skill points and so on. Mission size instance so you can't get lost in an open world, companions mostly upgrade themselves and item micromanagement primarily takes place before missions as there are no real loot drops during them. All of this can be fairly easily handled and this is how this series has always been. Really the only substantial gameplay addition that Hong Kong has to offer over Dragonfall is an overhaul of the Matrix. And yes, in case you're wondering, it's exactly what it sounds like. The digital world that hackers aka Deckers, well, so clever, utilize to find data or hack security systems to make your missions easier. In the previous games this was basically just a slightly different version of normal world combat. And in Hong Kong it still is, but now you first get an attempt to stealth your way past discovery programs that only get forced into fights when you fuck that up. Oh and also there's now a hacking minigame inside the Matrix, which I really wish they would have tutorialized because at my first time looking at all these goddamn symbols I had no idea what I needed to do and thus of course failed and triggered the alarm. Well, as it turns out this is like a more complex version of Splinter Cell Chaos Theories hacking where you have to look at the upper line and memorize what symbols appear where and that will give you an indication of which of the symbol arrangements at the bottom you have to pick. This change is nothing to write home about really but I will say this. The mechanics in Hong Kong manage what many other games that suddenly feel the need to add stealth fail at. In the Matrix it is always clear where enemies can see you, when the alarm will be activated and in case you do get detected you always have a chance to remedy the situation. Which works so much better than the usual half assed attempt at stealth where immediately the entire complex is aware of your position the moment one square inch of your left ass cheek is spotted. So yeah, turns out it is not that hard to come up with at least passable stealth mechanics for a portion of your game. Thank you Shadowrun Hong Kong. Other than that, yeah there are small changes like a new talent or getting to choose between skill A or skill B for your companions once in a while, but none of these change the gameplay too much. 
Which makes things rather difficult for me, because back when Dragonfall fixed many of the problems of Shadowrun Returns, I thought the gameplay was pretty decent. And all of these fixes are still in Shadowrun Hong Kong, so technically the gameplay is still decent. But only sitting on what we already accomplished certainly won't make the same impact twice, and just because I like Dragonfall doesn't mean I don't know any ways this series could have still improved. How about updating your ugly character models, for example? Example. How about making all charisma traits equally as viable or adding more tactical death to your combat than take cover and decimate the enemy's action and hit points simultaneously? I mean, jeez guys, could have just come to me if you had no idea what to work on next. This does bring me to my next segment, however. <laughs> Despite adding not much to the overall gameplay, Shadowrun Hong Kong is also, ironically, the buggiest this series has ever been. Constant typos in dialogue? Not exactly pretty. Losing an hour of progress because doors that should open won't open and objects that should be clickable aren't clickable? The ice is getting thinner. But where I have to cross my arms in protest is when from day one onward I have to use the fucking arrow keys to move the screen because despite running on full screen mode my mouse cursor isn't locked in and constantly goes over to my second monitor and what's even worse is that this still hasn't been fixed to the day of writing so what the fuck <laughs> Of course, what is completely new and without any ties to the previous games is the story. The setup is this. One day you get a strange message from an old friend, who asks you to come to him as he requires your help. Upon arrival there, you are ambushed by suspiciously strong armed forces that kill a few of the new friends you were with and force you into hiding. With nowhere to go, you seek the help of an important crime figure, who lets you work for him as a shadowrunner while he gathers information on your old friend's whereabouts, eventually uncovering a much larger plot that involves ruthless mega corporations and ancient monsters. Huh. Now the story consists of two major threats. Mainly it's about your foster father who asked you to come to Hong Kong and your quasi brother who you meet there. And since there's a lot of unfinished business between you all, the major themes revolve around family and reconciliation. But also in the background it is immediately clear that there is an undefined supernatural threat coming ever closer and what I really enjoyed is that it's left to player agency to look into that by engaging the locals or you know, not. What is not so great, however, is that the game is essentially split into two chapters, and the first one consists mainly of waiting for your employer to dig up anything relevant to the message that brought you to Hong Kong in the first place, which A makes you really wonder about your main character's motivation, and B in gameplay terms of course means do enough side missions until the main quest can be continued, and isn't that fun. So after digging around in a lot of side quests, nicely designed quests mind you, but side quests not Unless, finally the game lets you go on with a plot and start the second chapter, however suddenly it almost rushes you to a conclusion. Here, interrogate that guy, now rescue that guy, oh look, monsters, oh look, the final boss, oh look, credits! I really don't understand, Shadowrun Hong Kong's lore is fantastic, if only it was handed out in a nice, steady, piecemeal fashion, instead of dumping the entire plot development on you in the last few hours. And what doesn't exactly help matters is that the whole game just lacks any real kind of narrative tension. Your companions are certainly enjoyable. I mean, discussing transhumanism with the Rector certainly made him an instant favorite of mine, but no one in your group ever really argues with you or puts up a fight when you make a bad decision. Remember how much shit Aegar was giving you in Dragonfall and how all that hostility made her eventual character arc that much more impactful? I really miss that in Hong Kong. Additionally, you never really feel the presence of your main antagonist. Technically, he's supposed to be a threat because he's influencing the Hong Kong police force to capture you dead or alive. Practically, that problem is solved within the first 20 minutes of the game. You just visit your local underground crime boss and erase your identity, and then no one can track you down. So what should have been a search for answers in a dangerous city really doesn't feel very urgent, and this just furthers the problem of this game not giving you many reasons to care until shit goes sideways towards the very end. 
What I'm ultimately getting at is that Shadowrun Hong Kong does little to really excite me. It's a decent RPG, but worse in the story department compared to Dragonfall and just about stagnant in the gameplay front. And since it is also competing with a lot of other current RPGs, I don't think I can give a recommendation here. A decent game that is nevertheless outclassed by both its peers and its predecessor can only be recommended to either hardcore fans of the genre or hardcore fans of the franchise, and it stands to reason that both of those already made up their minds about buying this at release. To everyone else I have to say, play the director's cut of Dragonfall instead. Bokunjima, signing off.